I don't believe this is what one I of the great saw. moments in the history of baseball. Throwing beer into the audience. Yeah, that's, that's how it happened. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I like that we waited a minute to come out those doors because the audience just couldn't wait. There was so much anticipation when he came out of there. They were fired up. That was the, uh, for sports fans out there, that was the uh, intro song for Trevor Hoffman, the closer for the Padres. That's They'd right. They play Hell's Bell. <clears throat> and the 30,000 people in, in the stands had the same reaction. Just nobody cared. No one cared. They were like, <laughs> what's happening right now? Where are these special effects? Oh, it's just lights in a door that's on Is wheels. Is it too late to go to the car? <laughs> Uh, thank you all for joining us uh, this evening this Dan Sports. This is how we usually introduce the show. Mike sets it all up. So, Mike, take it away. It's June 19th, sports fans. And on this day in 1964, the landmark Civil Rights Act was finally passed in the United States Senate after surviving 83 days of filibuster protests by several opposing senators. Now, while this episode probably has enough good content to... For the three of us to blather on for 83 consecutive days, we <laughs> promise we won't. We've refined, streamlined, and whittled it all down to a perfectly proportioned package that includes only the very best sports stories from this date. They include yet another NBA draft that Portland would like a do-over on. Cleveland, this is for you. Football fans want to know what the hell a Steagle is. The Stanley <laughs> Cup lands in Texas and on Tobacco Road. Tragedy upsets the balance of the NBA's future, a historic upset on golf's biggest stage, a historic NBA Finals performance you might have forgotten, and the first baseball game ever played. And already the fans were complaining about overpriced shitty beer and how their team can't hit with runners in scoring position. Oh. <laughs> We could go on and on, but we know that sometimes less is more when it comes to sports history. Now, this makes almost 50 episodes that we've done, and we've pretty much mastered the process. So sit back and enjoy the most aerodynamic, sleek, and optimized episode yet of This Day in Sports. Yeah, wow. thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and that's the show. There so you go. thank you so much for coming out. Drive that's uh, exactly how we do it every time. Wasn't that worth it? Uh, you can tell well, that Mike is the most trained theater actor because he got that perfectly proportioned package. Well, yes, yes, I, he did. Perfectly did proportioned package. I heard it Windsor. once I said it. I got to tell you, I man, did. I saw Mike, Mike Shera. Frank's leaving already. <laughs> Mike Shera, he starred in a show at Stratford last year, and he wore bike shorts, like Lycra oh. bike shorts. So he does have a perfectly pro proportioned package <laughs> down. Down. He has it down. Now, I'll tell you one thing. Anyone else see the show? No. no. Uh, okay. <laughs> Count yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> we got to tell you, we have a main sponsor for our show. It's Cabin, uh, Gentleman Supply and Barbershop. They provided a lot of the swag that's coming out for your free. Frank, we can see you. That doesn't help. Um, and... We, uh, we, also, uh, we also thank them because they also give uh, our, our, some of our guests, and some, even some of the audience members, might get this room spray. This is a cabin, this is a barbershop that smells delicious. So if you're ever in the GTA and you want to get a cut, get a shave, just check out something. Pick up something for the gentleman in your life. Cabin, gentleman supply shop and barbershop, place to be. Wouldn't mm -hmm. you agree? I, I would agree. Absolutely. But now, in that swag bag, oh, um, that people, who got the swag? You did. That poster is uh, for the uh, Bob Cajun documentary that the director, Andy Keene, who's here tonight, brought for you. To give that to you. So that's an original Bob Cajun uh, documentary poster right there. Suitable for framing. All right. Yeah. And uh, Matt will autograph it for you. He has nothing to yeah, do with yeah, the project. Yeah, I will autograph will everything it. tonight. He's I do think it, it's strange that the room spray, because, you know, we it's an audio and we have visual yeah. as well. Yeah. And, but they really want us to push something. A smell. No one yeah, can smell. smell. Smell a vision. That's what it <laughs> People is. People will love it. So this is how we do We're going to jump in right now on a few things that happened on June 19th in sports history. And Matt's got the first one. Here we go. Okay. So how, this is how we'll do it. June 19th. In 1943, it was announced that for the 1943 NFL season, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Philadelphia Eagles would play as one combined team. So this was due to an increased American pressure in World War II. Uh, neither team had enough players to uh, field a full team, but together they could make it work. This sounds like a movie, doesn't it? It yeah, really it sounds like the plot of a movie. It's a real thing. And I so, think we have a graphic of that team right here. It's coming up here. It's, now, these graphics are about <laughs> as hot as the opening. I want to make sure that everyone's <laughs> minds aren't blown. But there will be eventually a PowerPoint happening behind there you. Will. But there will be. Okay, go ahead. I got more to say about this because Pittsburgh's Walt Keesling and Philly's Greasy Neal. I'm going to say that one Great again. Name. Greasy Neal. Yeah. They were named the team's yes. co-head coaches because both refused to take a demotion because they despised one another. Oh, so so they were both head coaches on this team. Oh. A few days after this announcement, 
Pittsburgh press columnist Chet Smith began calling them the Steagles, which yeah. caught on among fans as a nickname. In the official NFL history books, the team is known as the Phil Pitt Combine. Mm. Catchy. They had a 5-4-1 and one record that season and missed the playoffs. Yes, thank you. Yeah, in order to fan. keep their draft deferment <laughs> yeah. status, all 22 players on the team that year were required to also have full-time jobs in defense plants, with seven seen as being an extracurricular activity. One of the players, Ted Doyle, working at Westinghouse Electric and later realized that he had assisted on the Manhattan Project. Wow. Okay, so this was America's, well, you know that was America's first attempt to build an atomic bomb. I'm going to wrap this up telling you that the Steagles... Why Bob? Keep going. Yeah. We have the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> the Steagles experiment lasted just one season. Both teams returned in 1944. The Steagles, I did not know that. No, no, I knew not, I didn't know about that. But I want to also point this out. This is the wrong graphic, but I can make people believe that that is the Steagle yeah, team. Yeah, that's... That's the last graphic on our list. That's the... Yeah. That's the... But we we're going to go to the first Hopefully graphic. That'll come so, back. Michael, if you can go back to slide two, we're that was actually... We're still working out the kinks, you know. You yeah, know. we're working that out. This is the first out. time we've done it live for anyone, in yeah, case you couldn't tell. very true. Mike, you got the second one? Hey, there they are. Hey, Michael, there's, there's the Steagles. The Steagles. It's going we so go. well. Okay, okay, uh, Mike, take second one. Okay, number two. In On Jan June 19th, 2016, the Cavaliers defeated Golden State 93-89 in Game 7 of the Finals in Oakland to win their first ever NBA championship. Cleveland became the first team in NBA history to come back from a three games to one Finals deficit and win it. LeBron James was named Finals MVP, and I have a little... Um, this is going to stir it up. With it. I, I think a lot of people... They think Michael Jordan, if they're our age, mm -hmm. they tend to think Jordan is the greatest player of all time, and I'm certainly not trying trying to run Michael Jordan down. I'll give you a little bit of information that I found while writing this out. There's a statistic that's relatively new called game score, and what it does is it measures a player's contribution in a game, takes everything into account, points, efficiency, defense, everything. And I looked up the 10 best playoff performances in a single game in NBA history in the finals. Guess how many Michael Jordan has out of 10? Two. Three. Zero. Okay. Zero. Guess how many LeBron James has? 10. Three. Four. <laughs> you guys are terrible at this. Uh, LeBron James has four of the 10 greatest NBA finals performances of all time. Nobody else has more than two. Magic has one. Tim Duncan. Jordan's not in that list. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm... Not trying to run down Michael Jordan. I'm just saying when people talk about how clutch Jordan was and blah, 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 and they run LeBron down about how he hasn't won, there's some pretty empirical evidence there that he was pretty great in the finals a lot. You're going to have, sorry, Mike. Oh, God. Uh, this guy's going to talk to you. We're going to fight after. Yes. Yeah, I know. I can tell. Uh, All right, 1977, <laughs> June 19, 1977. Despite a threat on his life late in the round, Hubert Green held on to win the U.S. Open at Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma by one shot. With four holes, four holes left, Green was approached by a local police and told he had received a phone call saying he would be assassinated while he played the 15th hole. He played the holes of that incident, making a four-foot bogey putt on the 18th to win by one stroke. That's the guy right he's, there. He's got a Hubert feel to him. Yes. And uh, who, who was the assassin at the end? Michael Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Turns out. Another thing to think Bit about. Bit of a twist. <laughs> just, yeah, just keep it in mind. 2013, Baltimore first baseman Chris Davis had two home runs and five RBI during a 13-3 Orioles win over the Tigers in Detroit. That season, he hit 53 home runs, setting an Orioles franchise single season record high. The entire 1954 Orioles team hit... 52 home runs. Yeah. So he hit more home runs than the entire team in 1954. The team's leader that year was Vern Stevens, who hit eight. Uh, Whose favorite Oriole is Vern Stevens? Had, nope. Okay, nobody. Show of hands? No one? All right. Uh, 1986. Two days after being selected by Boston with the second overall pick of the NBA draft, forward Len Bias died of a drug overdose in his former residence at the University of Marion, Maryland. Apart from the personal nature of the tragedy, which obviously is the most important thing, a sports fan's mind can't help but wonder how good and how much this would have changed everything in the NBA for the next 10 years. The Celtics had just won the NBA title that year. They were 67-15 and 15 that season and cruised through the playoffs, and they would have added a guy who would have been, I think, like he was 6'8", 220, he could rebound. He could uh, play either forward position. He could defend. He could have defended Jordan. He was bigger and as athletic. 
it would have changed the Eastern Conference a lot had he been able to play. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the tragedy on a personal level is more important, but the mind does... That's a big what-if in the NBA over the next uh, 10 or 15 years there. Poor Len Bias. Apparently, it was the only time he had ever tried drugs in his life, too. Oh, boy. Well, that's depressing. Yes. Uh, Enjoy let's, the show. Let's bring up the, <laughs> the, the mood a little bit. June 19th, 2006, the Hurricanes won their first NHL championship, uh, defeating Edmonton 3-1. In, yeah, okay. Oh. In Game 7 of the Stanley Cup too Finals, soon, Justin soon. Williams' empty net goal late in the game sealed a win, which is the first title for the former New England and Hartford Whalers since they won the 1973 WHA Championship. Carolina goalie Cam Ward won the Conn Smythe Trophy, becoming the fourth rookie ever to be named MVP of the NHL playoffs. And if you're interested, uh, Corey Stillman's going to be here on Saturday yeah. night. He won the Cup with the Hurricanes. That's right. Tied it in. Thank you. Thank well played. Yeah. Well played. <laughs> Nay is the right reaction. You, like, uh, you like Cam Ward? You're a Cam Ward fan? I like Cam Ward. Yeah. Sure. Why? Mike? You're sure. Stir you're stirring things up? Yeah. No, no. no. I, I just, I'm yeah. just, uh, yeah. you, you brought him up. I like, I like him as a, as a goalie. Okay. <laughs> that was it. That was a controversial, Matt. That's a hot controversial. Take. Yeah. Mike's going after Jordan. I'm going, uh, I'm bringing up Cam Ward. Let's go to June 19th, 1955. Jack Fleck. Everybody knows this guy. Jack Fleck, a municipal golf pro or a golf course pro from Iowa, he completed one of the greatest upsets in golf history, beating the legendary Ben Hogan in an 18-hole playoff at the Olympic Club in San Francisco to win the U.S. Open. Fleck won the tournament using clubs that were actually manufactured by Hogan's company, preventing Hogan Ooh. from winning the tournament for a fifth time. Ouch. Irony. Um, <laughs> irony on the uh, irons. Iron, the irony. Uh, that, the day before, though, this is great, too. NBC had actually signed off their coverage the day before with them congratulating Hogan on winning the tournament again. After the TV coverage ended, Fleck hit an eight-foot putt for birdie to tie Hogan and force the extra 18 holes. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. I didn't know this guy, but when I see his face a little closer, like just closer on that, it, it could have also been like, this is the Zodiac Killer. Like just some looks. It looks like this could go all wrong. Am I wrong? Yeah. He seems overly friendly. I'm a little afraid of him. I'm afraid of this guy. There's something terrifying inside the trophy. Yeah, that's true. Well, we're bringing the party down again. Yeah, way to go. <laughs> okay, let's moving on. Uh, 1984. Maybe the most significant draft in NBA history was held in New York City. With the first pick, which they won over Portland via a coin flip. Like, imagine that happening now. They literally flipped a coin to see who'd get the first pick. The Rockets selected University of Houston center Hakeem, then Akeem Elijahwan. Then the Blazers made the fateful decision to select Kentucky center Sam Bowie with the second pick, allowing Michael Jordan to fall to Chicago at number three. There's a great, if you watch the documentary, there's, there's a shot of the Chicago executive sitting at the draft table like... <laughs> like he's like grinning from ear to ear because they picked the other guy before him. Portland made the playoffs that year and had acquired the number two overall pick from Indiana to trade. And they already had a young shooting guard in Clyde Drexler, hence not taking Michael Jordan and choosing Sam Bowie. Blazers lost their star center Bill Walton to foot injuries five years earlier. They've Greg Oden got foot injuries and as did Sam Bowie. He barely played for a couple of seasons Struggled, and obviously Jordan going to the Bulls led to six championships and maybe the greatest career in NBA history. The Bulls were given seven offers for that number three pick. Philadelphia apparently offered Dr. J straight up for that wow. pick. Wow. Uh, but they turned them all down, and uh, Bowie ended up playing in 349 NBA games and averaged 10 points and seven rebounds over his career. Other players in that draft, John Stockton, Charles Barkley, Kevin Willis, Alvin Robertson, and Otis Thorpe. That was a huge draft. And we unfortunately lost uh, Bill Walton to death yeah. this past week. To death. That's right. Yes. That's what I said. Yeah. No one else likes that Wait one. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. bringing us down. Try June 19th, 1999. Am I on this path? Am I on the right spot? Okay, yep. good. Yeah, yeah. The you're, Dallas you're Stars won their first Stanley Cup on a controversial goal by Brett Hall. Anyone remember this one? Okay, at 14.51, a triple overtime in Game 6 of the Finals versus Buffalo. The controversy stemmed from whether or not Hall's foot was in the goal crease. At the time of the goal, the referees ruled it legal because he was in possession of the puck when his foot was in the crease. I don't know. That's what happens know. when you're a Buffalo fan. Yeah. When you're a Sabres fan, I'm going to tell you, there's a pennant right there that says the Sabres. That's 67, 76, 76, 76, 77. It says right there, think Stanley Cup. I'm telling you, that is really sad. They've never won. That was right there. 1976. Uh, I think they 77. went to the finals that year, but yeah, yeah they did not yeah, win. But think Stanley Cup. Yeah. Buffalo like is still slogan? thinking. 
Yeah, it just says that Stanley right there. Yeah. Cup. yeah. Like other teams are like win Stanley Cup. I think I think that's <laughs> like, a problem with Buffalo. They only think about it. They don't win the Stanley imagine Cup. Imagine success. Yeah, imagine. At least they've got some Super Bowl wins. Oh, oh no. Oh, think sorry. Super Bowl. Oh. Too, too soon. Yeah. Let's let's move far away from Buffalo. Okay. Because in nineteen twenty four at the Finnish Olympic trials in uh-huh. Helsinki. Y'all remember this one. Pavo mm-hmm. Nermi. You guys remember Nermi? He set a uh, world Pavel. record time in the men's fifteen hundred meter event with a time of three fifty two point six. And then less than an hour later, he set a world record time in the three mile event with a time of fourteen oh two. Point zero zero. I got to be honest. I don't know if these are seconds or minutes or what. What do you think they are, Mike? <laughs> just numbers. Just they're, numbers. They're to hours. Me. Hey, I'm just. They're you're hours. a big Pavo Nuri fan. What do you think? Is it yeah. minutes or seconds? It's actually the three mile event. It's yes. Fourteen days. Fourteen, 14, 14 days. So 14. these must be minutes. They, I th- I do believe that he went on to win five gold at the at those Olympics in, in 1924. Pavel Nurmi. And I think he was the first athlete to do that, to win five golds in an Olympics. Okay. I'll take your word for it. No one will contest that fact. No. Okay. Uh, 1970, Jim Bouton's controversial book, Ball Four, was released today. Bouton was a pitcher for the Seattle Pirates and Astros during the 1969 season, and his book was a candid, kind of behind-the-scenes look at the life of a major leaguer. It divulged numerous unflattering secrets about the lives and behavior of players and executives. This was kind of a new thing. People didn't do that. It was kind of a look a behind tell-all. the curtain at the sex lives yeah. and behavior of players that nobody was willing to talk about before. One of the big things he revealed was the use of methamphetamines by players, how rampant that was, and stories about uh, players cheating on their wives, and Mickey, Mickey Mantle's alcohol abuse was a big one. Uh, Do you think that of, was a shock to anybody? <laughs> well, I don't know if it was a shock to people who followed the team, but oh, okay. I think to fans, sure. pre-internet, you know, limited yeah. television, I think it was. He got in a lot of trouble, and a lot of players refused to ever speak to him or shake his hand. Yeah. Or like He was the first guy to kind of, you know, now we sort of, we're behind the scenes on everything yeah. now. But He was, was a, a pariah at that point. In yeah, he, he really, like, he was out of baseball soon after that yep. because nobody wanted him around. Uh, but it's if you've ever read it, it's really interesting. Has anyone it, read Ball Four? Any Ball Four Boutons yeah, out there? I've read Ball okay. It is. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. it has been listed on Time Magazine's list of the hundred greatest nonfiction books ever written. Yeah. So like it's it's a really big deal. Um, well, but what's interesting about reading it now is you like you said it doesn't seem like much because we're it's, so used to books like that. Yes. But not at that time. Yeah. No. Sure. Not not in ni- 1970. No. We got a few more of these. 19. Uh, this is 1971, June 19th, 1971. UCLA's Jimmy Connors won the NCAA men's singles title in South Bend, Indiana, by defeating Roscoe Tanner. Any Roscoe Tanner fans out there? <laughs> in four He's sets. He's actually here. He's oh my God, Roscoe! <laughs> Roscoe come on stand up. up. Uh, Connors became the first freshman ever to win the championship, a feat that his future longtime rival, John McEnroe, would match while at Stanford in 1978. I love the way you hit words sometimes. A McEnroe. Yeah, you got to. You got that radio voice. You got to. Oh, it's me. (laughs) (laughs) Over to you, Matt. 2021. In game four of the Eastern Conference Finals, Tampa Bay's Braden Point scored a goal in his seventh consecutive NHL playoff game. So that was tying the record for the second longest such streak in history. The longest streak belongs to... Anybody? You guessed it. Ten straight games. I think I heard. Reggie Leach, that's correct. Yeah, who scored in <laughs> ten straight playoff games <laughs> in 1976 for Philadelphia. The Riverton rifle, Reggie Leach. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's my radio voice. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Sam, did, you ever, did you ever meet Reggie? Leach? I met Reggie Leach. Yeah, well, I'm from Flin Flon. Yeah, Sam so, from uh, Flin Flon, I Manitoba. Met, I Reggie met Bobby Leach. Clark and Reggie Leach. Uh, Reggie wasn't uh, particularly uh, personable. Bobby uh, was. Okay. Reggie was just more like, uh, yeah, you know. Hey, nice to meet you, Reggie. I'm a big fan of yours. I'm from Flin Flon. I think the reaction was, ain't that great. Yeah, well, you know, it, it might have been the day. I mean, I, I think you have a lot of people day. coming up to you, and uh, yeah, it might have been the day, but it was uh, it was not as as much of a payoff as meeting Bobby Clark. He was very nice. Yeah. <laughs> did Bobby Clark slash you when you met him? No, he did not. not. Break he did. Well, when I said I'm from Flin Flon, he wouldn't okay, he assault me anymore. Right, he was going to be nice and friendly about that. Big Reggie Leach fans out there, 
Oh, Great. Yeah, oh one person. Yeah, yes, one right. person. Excellent. There we go. All right. Uh, 1988, Detroit's Isaiah Thomas had six steals in Game 6 of the NBA Finals versus the Lakers. The Pistons lost 103-102 on a phantom foul call on Bill Lane Beer in the, the game's final seconds, and they ended up losing the series in seven games. Thomas set a playoff record with 66 steals in that year's playoffs. He also set an NBA playoff record that game by scoring 25 points in the third quarter, despite playing with a severely sprained ankle that had happened a cup in the first quarter of that game. 66 steals in the postseason. Like, what? Yeah. how many, you know, it's I'm like not going to do the math. It's like three a game. Okay. That's not that. But We're every just, game. <laughs> he had 60 in one. Yeah. And he had <laughs> one in, in five other games. And he had six in this game, and that's it. He's like, oh, i, I got to turn he it on this game if I want to break that record. Playoffs, yeah. Uh, okay, this is going back. Now, you're going to see this original photo, and you're going to go, oh, oh, I thought that was the Steagles. But this is going to be... I forgot uh, all about the photos. The this 1846, is okay? June 19, 1840. I love that there's a guy with a top hat. Well, that's yeah. Lincoln. That's Lincoln. 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 Yes, it was. The first ever officially recognized baseball game was played today in Hoboken, New Jersey. It refeatured the New York Nines, defeating the Knickerbockers 23-1 to in four innings. The game was arranged by Alexander Joy Cartwright. Any Alexander Joy Cartwright fans out there? Uh, oh, boo. And the game featured Doc Adams inventing the shortstop position. In previous versions of the game, there were only eight players, one at each infield base, but a ninth was added today, and the current version of the game was born. And that is June 19th so far. Let's get a little... Oh, oh, you yeah. 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 Thank you, June 19th. Yeah, a lot of gifts there from June yes. 19th. I feel Friends. like, Mike, you had a lot of Jordan in there. Did you feel that? No? Okay. I just had one. Okay. Now, oh, two, 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 yeah. Friends, we're on the road for the first time, doing this live for the first time. We're yeah. in Bob Cajun. Yeah, yeah. Yes, let's okay. hear for Bob Cajun. Yep. Okay, spattering. Spattering of applause. There might be some rivals Not out there Not a lot of civic well. pride here, apparently. Very <laughs> excited. And we want to know more from a local. So we've invited a local guest to join us today on the show, ask a few local questions, and then have them join us for some quick hits. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to introduce this person. This is, now, again, I know you were blown away by the opening, how he walked out <laughs> at this, and you were like, oh, my goodness, where did they come from? How did they go behind that door? And normally, how did that actually happen? Normally, we'd cut it after that, but not us. No, not us. No. So our, first, our our guest here he gave up the sleepy life of a Toronto actor to sleepy life of uh, the Toronto actor to join the cutthroat fast paced world of Bob Cajun. <laughs> this is I see what he did. Action movie. I see what he did. Yeah, uh, with uh, with me, Sandy. He was the co founder of the award winning improv troupe Slap Happy. Uh, he worked with Matt as a writer on the George Strombolopoulos Tonight Show and has absolutely no connection to Mike. Uh, locals will know him as a regular here at Globus Theatre and followers of the show on Instagram will know him as a guy who jumps all over us whenever we make a mistake. About the Habs. Yeah. Yes. Please welcome Dave Pierce is here. Dave yeah. Pierce, join us in here. Yeah. Yes, Great Dave, and Dave, cold. you made yeah. it. You got to close that. You oh, yeah. closed the door. There, you got to. Yeah, you, you got to. Thanks push for you. having me. I actually, you, I've got a mistake for you already. Great. Uh -oh. Okay, great. Okay, okay. okay. 70, uh, that, that Sabres team did not make the finals. The Habs won that year and they beat the Bruins. Okay. The Sabres made the finals against the Flyers the first year the Flyers They, played. they imagined they made they, the finals. They, they dreamt of it. They dreamt it. Yes. That's exactly Dave, what happened. This is exactly what you do to us all the uh, time. constantly. Well, you, guys, you, guys, I listen to the podcast constantly. It's like, nope, no, okay, no, okay. Just, just pick one. Dave, just is, pick one. is that why everyone in town is so mad at you all the time? Constantly, you correct them? Co constantly walking around. That's not around. how you make ice cream, Marika. That's not how you raise chickens in your backyard. Yeah, okay. She gets that. That person here? She's right there. Yes. Yeah, I thought you raised chickens. Yes, okay. no, I'm not complaining. I got farm fresh eggs yesterday, even though she does not technically have a farm because that would be against bylaws. <laughs> Welcome to Small Town Life, boys. This is what we've been looking for yeah. all this entire show, was uh, exactly. controversy about uh, uh, eggs and uh, where you raise chickens. And peonies. Thank you. Uh, you're Thank welcome, you for Dave. Yes. Well, Dave, thanks for stopping by. I know you're. Um, <laughs> thanks. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. So, uh, Dave, we have a few quick questions you want to ask about okay. local uh, life here in the in the Quarthas in, in the yeah, Bob Mike, I think you have one to start off with. Uh, Dave, my question is: uh, tonight is Game Three of the Stanley Cup Final, as you Absolutely, know. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, and we're going to try to wrap this up, uh, you know, at a reasonable time, so that we can catch a lot of that game. Uh, where in town would you recommend we go to watch that game? Well, because this town mostly shuts down. Yes, at, that, we uh, figured as much. Yes, uh, but for so, three big city lads looking for a big night out to watch hockey. I, uh, well, unfortunately, they are a chain, so I can't really promote a local place. But I would uh, say the Wing House would okay. be the place. Goes. It'll be the only place that's open that has a, okay. a TV. Uh, and then, then also they have a TV. TV. Yes, they yeah. might have three. <laughs> whoa, three TVs! Whoa, 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 I don't want to be overloaded. Yeah, no. yeah that there sounds you go. Like but that, three that's TVs. Right, that sounds 
sounds like a Lindsay idea. They're gonna, <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey. Our new sponsor Easy. is the Wing House. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the sponsor. If you're here from the Wing House, we are hungry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Dave. You. Thank no you. problem. Oh, Dave, I might have had a question for you, but as soon as you said bylaw, I just want to know what bylaw bothers you the most in this town. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, you definitely need to uh, contact the city if you're going to build a shed over a certain size. Oh, okay. As Marika can testify. Yeah. Because it's in compliance. It is in compliance. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Thank you for sense. being That's here. I needed sense. the material. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely perfect. Well, uh, so Dave. Yes. Um, yes, Sandy. Yes. So We've just met. Yeah, we just met. Yes. Uh, so, you know, you've you got these uh, rivals and we always Absolutely. have to know, like, who are the rivals in town? So when right. you're playing uh, sports, because that's what this podcast is about, who are the biggest rivals to Bob Cage? Oh, uh, I mean, I'd throw it open to the uh, audience. I'm more of a newbie here, yeah. but uh, we definitely have a thing going against uh, Lindsay. Lindsay, yeah. oh, Lindsay things- styles itself as a big city and, yes. uh, you know, they, they've got, yes, exactly. Oh, yes. His, oh, wow. his is for Lindsay. Is it still the teen capital for uh, pregnancy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sandy. It was. <laughs> it, 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 I was. It, it, I was. I was here 10 years ago, and someone said, did you know that Lindsay's the capital of Canada for a teen pregnancy? And I said, okay. And at that time, my wife and I went to Zeller's. Okay? Uh, yes. That gives you how long ago that was. There it was. And, and we were the, counting them off. Is it still the capital? All I know is those kids are playing my son baseball right now. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's, That's exactly it. right. I'm wearing yeah. a uh, Bob Cajun Cougars uh, shirt, which given that my wife is one of the coaches and wears Cougars on her chest. That yeah, must be so confusing. Yeah, very confusing for the uh, for the adolescent boys. All yeah, those yeah. teens of 10 years ago are now on the Cougars. They're, they're <laughs> absolutely Cougars, and their moms are. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dave, thank you for taking our rapid-fire local questions. Dave Pierce, everybody. Thank, you thank you very much. Thank you very much. You did pretty well. Uh, yeah. Dave, we do a thing called uh, Quick Hits quick on the show. Quick Hits. Yes, where We just basically fire off quick things. We don't make commentary. We just go for it. So, Dave, we're going to ask you to join us today. Mike, you're going to kick off our Quick Hits, giving Dave three shots to get ready to give us his Quick Hit. Are you ready, Mike? Okay, thank you very much. Great. Ready? Yeah. Quick Hits! 2000, the Minnesota Wild announced the Montreal Canadiens legend Jacques Lemaire would be the term team's first ever head coach. Lemaire had already won a Stanley Cup with the Devils in 1995 and stayed in Minneapolis for eight seasons, reaching the playoffs three times in that span. Quick hits, quick hits. In 1973, Cincinnati left fielder Pete Rose and Dodgers center fielder Willie Davis each had the 2000th hit of their MLB career on the same day. This day, despite Davis being just a year older than Rose, Rose had 2,256 more hits in his career, but Davis just had 561 more. Quick hit. Quick hits! <laughs> Thank you. In 1987, Gay Calloway rode 12 to 1 shot Sprouston Boy to win the two mile Queen Alexandra Stakes, becoming the first woman jockey to win a race at England's Royal Ascot Racehorse. Hey, hey. Quick hits. There we go. There 19, we go. Thank you. Thank you. I studied. Thank you. 1949 at Charlotte Speedway, Sarah Christian of Dallanega, Georgia, became the first woman to compete in a NASCAR race. It was also the first official race in NASCAR history. So a woman there right at the start. Christian qualified in 13th place while driving a Ford. While she did not finish this race, she placed 18th in a race at Daytona a month later, and two other women, Ethel Mobley and Louise Smith, also raced in that event. Wow. Well done. Yeah. yeah. You didn't even get that ahead of time. Time, folks that's yeah. right off the top very good nice will you read, read these ahead of time yeah. quick hits hakeem olajuwon had 30 points and 10 rebounds and blocked the final sh- shot attempt of the game by new york's john starks to seal houston's win over the knicks in game six of the nba finals it forced a game seven in the finals for the first time in six years and the only time in the 1990s Quick hit, 2000, the year 2000 the minnesota wild announced that Montreal- i just read that already oh jeez. <laughs> oh. oh. try to keep up man i know it's hard <laughs> I was just, just thinking, talk amongst yourselves. I was thinking about over. the height of that shed. And well, he I was deserves thinking about your driving by and looking well, at that shed and boobs. getting out a tape measure. <laughs> yes. And just trying to figure out. All right, give right, it to me. Then. Give yeah. it to me. Yeah. 1992 at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Evander Holyfield defeated Larry Holmes via unanimous decision in a 12 round bout to remain the unified heavyweight boxing champion. Holmes became the fourth former champion that Holyfield defeated during the first his first championship run. He had already beaten George Foreman, Buster Douglas, and Sandy. Got to be Michael Dokes. Michael Dokes, because you're reading it right there. It was Michael Dokes as well. (laughs) 
<laughs> Quick hits! In 1990, the North Stars announced that Montreal Canadiens legend Bob Gainey would be their new head coach. Gainey had led the team to a Stanley Cup Finals appearance in his first season in Minnesota and stayed with the team until it moved to Dallas. Lost to Pittsburgh that year, right, Dave? Shut up. Yep. He was a fired. He was a fired midway through the 1995-96 season, replaced by Ken Hitchcock, who led the Stars to a championship a few years later. Quick hit! 1963 at Fenway Park, William Gates Brown of the Tigers hit a home run off Doff Don Hefner, becoming the first black player in history to hit a home run in his first MLB at bat. All right, All Dave right. Pierce of the Green. I got one more. I got one more. I got one more. Want to do one more? I got one more. It's a good okay, one. It's, they it's they a, want more. They're hungry for no, more. No, no, one more. more. It's, it's timely. The people it's time. what they want. Yeah. It's timely. Do the one Mike and I did. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Everybody. Jacques Lemaire. Who does yes, it there we go. Lots of hab content. <laughs> Quick hit! 1952 Dodgers pitcher Carl Erskine threw a no hitter versus the Cubs during a 5 nothing Brooklyn win at Ebbets Field. There are only seven no hitters in MLB during the 1950s, and Erskine had two of them. Wow. R.I.P. Carl Erskine, R. last R. of the boys of summer. Last of the boys of summer, Dodgers. You read that like a 1930s reporter. Yeah, Justin, that's that. Well, item. Like, Kid Nickel. <laughs> item. <laughs> Ryan Erskine. Not the bad dude. Dateline, Bob Cajun. Dave, thank you so much for being here. We're thank about you. to give away some more prizes, and we appreciate it. Dave Pierce, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Dave Pierce. Thanks, Dave. Wing House. Yes, Dave House. Thanks, Dave. You can go awesome. through the door and back to the audience. There goes Dave Pierce, everybody. Let's see if he can close this door effectively oh, without breaking it. Watch. Hey. hey, there he goes. Dave Pierce, everybody. He's a pro. Uh, you know what? Let's give away another prize with another video. This one courtesy of Ann Pornell. Here we go. Hey, it's me, your gal, Ann Pornell, one of the co-hosts of the Great Canadian Baking Shows. And I hope you're having an amazing time in Bob Cajun at the This Day in Sports live experience. And I've got a tennis trivia question for you. Here we go. In the middle of a 1994 match versus Andre Agassi, which tennis player handed his racket to the ball girl in frustration and asked her to play a point against Agassi, which she won before returning to lose the match in straight sets? Is it... A. Boris Becker. B. Pete Sampras. Or is it C. Jim Courier? Ooh. Who thinks it's A? Yeah. Who thinks it's B? Yeah. Who thinks it's C? Yeah. Oh, I like it. It was like kind of all even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see who we got. Mike's got a prize for somebody. Who we got? The answer is. The frozen. A. Boris Becker. Oh. Boris Becker. I, I hope you have a wonderful time. And hey, watch the baking show. Or, you know, live your lives. I'm not your boss. Let me talk to That's okay. That's all right. That's all right. It's all out of order. It's okay. All right. So uh, we are going to, uh, we're going to go into a draft now. Uh, this is going to be, this is a big part of our show when you do this thing. And uh, Mike, how's this going to work today? So what we usually do is we do at the, the second part of our show is like we do a draft that's sort of an obscure sort of in a fantasy style draft, but we do it about sort of sometimes silly topics like we've done ones about who had the best mustache in the NHL in the 70s or who had the best hair or like best ugliest team uniform. Yep. So we do, we take turns picking uh, based on who our guest for the second half of the show is and then that person comes on and sort of adjudicates who he thinks picked the best team. So our category, our guest tonight, well, do you want to say who yeah, our guest yeah, is? Yeah, sure. It's Andy okay. Keene. And Andy Keene directed the uh, Bob Cajun documentary about the Tragically Hip concert that was out here. He's going to be our guest in the second half. And you have the poster already. There's the poster. Sarah's yeah, got yeah. a poster as well. There you go. Back there. And, uh, and so Andy challenged us. Andy said, look, because it's uh, the Tragically Hip and it's about music, I want you to pick uh, songs that are about sports or have a line about a sports figure or a team or a sport, whatever it is. Popular song. We're each going to pick four of those, and then Andy's going to come back in the second half. We'll give you a chance to go to the bar. Come back, and then Andy's going to, to uh, give us his judgment on who he thinks picked the best lineup of four songs that are about sports or have a line about sports within it. So we rolled this um, this sort of really nerdy D&D uh, &D electric dice uh, on Google, <laughs> just like a three-sided die, because I mean, in reality, how does that exist? Would you wonder? Three-sided die? No. So we rolled this thing. Matt picked, uh, got first, I'm second, and, and Mike is third, and we are now going to pick songs that have something to do in some way with uh, sports, and uh, Mike, you, or, uh, Matt, you get to kick off. All right, I got to... Uh, and is you a, can react to these songs, by the way, if you like yeah. them or not. It's very important. You think, no, <laughs> already, not, not already. Not immediately. The idea, yeah. 
Oh, I, Andy also wanted us to pick them kind of like a like a baseball order, like a leadoff yes. song, yeah, sure. leadoff song, clean up sure. song. Because yep. we're picking four, sure. right? Yeah. Here's the thing, each. Matt. I'd pick exactly the same four songs. Yeah, I know, but this is just for Andy. Okay. It's all for Andy. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> do it. All right, I'm gonna go. The first one. Now these are songs about sports, and I wasn't sure this was a song about sports, but it actually is the Eye of the Tiger. You know the song from Rocky, Survivor? Like, I thought, oh, maybe this was just like a, like a song, and they got it. But no, th- that song was written for Rocky. They wanted, uh, they wanted a Queen song. I think they wanted another one, Bites of Dust, and they got turned down. And so Survivor was commissioned, and they watched, you know, like they got sent parts of it, and they wrote Eye of the Tiger for the movie. Okay. And pick an Eye of the Tiger. Eye of the Tiger. How do you guys feel about that? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah come excellent. on, that's okay, sports. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Please contain your enthusiasm because we yeah. don't have a lot of time for all Not these applause. Not a lot applause. of Survivor applause. fans. We're up. trying yeah. to get to the hockey game. Please, please, friends. Uh, okay, well, I feel if you're leading off, you got to say, put me in, coach. You got to go with Center Field by yeah. John Fogarty. Yeah, so, yeah, Center, yeah, yes, right. thank you. Right. There's a leadoff song. All right, Center Field. And by the way, just, uh, just a little uh, extra. Uh, right now, Michael is back there making, as we select these songs, he's putting them on a Spotify playlist. He'll play them over intermission, intermission so we'll hear these songs as we're getting a beer at intermission. Hey, Michael. Yeah, hey, Michael, Michael. Michael. Hey, working hard. Yeah, give him a hand. Yeah. Okay, so for my uh, leadoff uh, song, I'm going to take uh, Stompin' Tom Connors, the hockey song. Yeah, there you uh, go. I don't know. I mean, I feel like that's going to be a winner with the crowd. I'm sorry, that song's about hockey? <laughs> I don't know if you knew that, but yeah, it was it's, 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 hid- it's for, hidden in the uh, lyrics. But if you listen closely enough, you can tell, yes. <laughs> All uh, right. So that's a bit on the nose, but I'll take it. Great. That's a great one. All right, I've already lost the crowd, so I'm just going with ones I like here. I'm going to go with... Um, Sandy, you know this, so I'm getting to it before you. Yep. It's from the album Hockey Rock Winnipeg Style, oh, yeah. which was a an album out in the 80s, I believe, in Winnipeg, where where bands covered, like bands like Harlequin, Streetheart, Randy Bachman, Colin James, all did song parodies for the Jets. And this the song I'm picking is Numenin, set to uh, the yep. song Innocence by Harlequin. Yes. Can you sing a little? I think Listen, Matt, and the crowd goes wild. No. <laughs> Listen, Matt... You Newman need to and, give them an idea what this is. across the blue line. Newman and, you know, yeah. like things like yeah. that. Yeah. This album is incredible. People, There's also, Randy Bachman does One Hot Rush, Russian Jet for uh, Baby You Ain't, ain't Seen Nothing yeah. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. You got to pick up this album. It's available nowhere. <laughs> I am going with Newman in on, by Harlequin. On cassette. All right. I'm going to do this. I'm going to pick this next pick, the second pick. I don't know if, how much in the audience, how many people in the audience know it, but it's a, it's a sick jam, as they say. Oh. And um, it's one of my wife's favorite songs. It's oh. Let's Ride by Chuck Lair. Oh, yeah, and yeah. The reason I, yeah, anyone? Yeah, no. The reason I'm, I'm picking Let's Ride by Chuck Lair because it's one of my favorite Toronto-based lyrics, which is, it's the, it's the ninth inning with two outs. I hit a homer over left field like Carter did to Philly. So I like that line. I like the whole reference to Joe Carter. I'm taking Let's Ride by Chuck Lair. There we go. When you hear <laughs> it, by the voice. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's what? excited. Let me say. She loves when, it. She loves it. When you, right there, I feel it. When you are going out to that bar, get, what is your drink of choice? Malibu you rum. Go. You're going to go, I'm going to Malibu. What's this jam? And you're going to lose your mind. It's yeah. a fantastic song. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Malibu. <laughs> nope. Doesn't go like that. Doesn't go <laughs> like that. It. No. Mike, what do you That's got? It's incorrect. Uh, it's not my turn. I'm going to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pick, uh, this is pretty on the nose too. I can't believe it got back to me, but I'm going to take uh, Glory Days by Bruce Springsteen. Uh, <laughs> you know, there was a, you know, their line about it. There was, I had a friend who was a big baseball player back in high school. Yep. Throw that speed ball by, I don't know what a speed ball is. I guess that's yeah. a. That was a big controversial thing, right? Yeah. Because people who are baseball enthusiastic, someone goes, drug thing. <laughs> uh, thank you, Bob Cajun. <laughs> drug thing. Um, but, automatically assume, but the uh, but people. I don't know if you follow this controversy. People are like speedball. Speedball is not a thing. It should be a fastball. And uh, little Steven said uh, he's trying to write a song. He's not a, trying to write a like a sports book. Like it's just go with the lyric, friends. Like it was a big deal over uh, Twitter last I, year. Oh. I just like fastball is the same amount of syllables and everything. It doesn't need to rhyme. I just no. fastball. Yeah. Anyway, speedball. Speedball. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, either way, that's it's a good my choice. Song. It's a great choice. You don't like the use of speedball? Like no. You, okay, so I, you're, you're shitting on your own pick. That's right. Okay, uh, moving along. I'm going to go with this song. Um, was actually made by musicians. I'm going to pick the Super Bowl Shuffle. Oh, okay. I watched it again, and it is fantastic. This is the Chicago Bears, uh, 1995. You got the fridge. You got Walter Payton. You got, uh, you got uh, Jim McMahon. 
Uh, but it's the best when you get like the backup quarterback and some of the uh, less known players. The kicker. Yeah. kicker oh yeah. my gosh! And they some start people, rapping. It's so, it's so good. good. It's so good. The Super Bowl Shuffle. Is it? We're not here to make no trouble. We're just here to do the Super Bowl yeah. Shuffle. Yeah. 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 And also, is that the lyric I'm remembering? Yeah. Yeah. There's like we're not here to ruffle ruffle any feathers, like or to make no any ruffle, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Ruffle rhymed to shuffle. Sure it did. Trouble rhymed to shuffle. Yeah. They, they, any fans of that song? Yeah, no, yeah, no. you know, no, you're gonna go home, you're gonna watch it, and you're gonna be like, "What was I thinking?" All right, here it is. This is what I'm gonna go. This is a song that like, we're taking lyrics that might be sports related in some way. I like "Rocky Mountain Way" by Joe Walsh. Thank you, because of the lyric. Bases are loaded and Casey's at bat, playing it play by play. Time to change the batter. Yeah, there it is. Wow. Thank like, you. Thank like you for no applause. No, no, no. No, don't do it now. That was the right level of applause, which was uh, less than zero. Okay. A song by The Fix. Okay, here we go. <laughs> wow, well, all the references coming yeah, out there. Are. Uh, my third song is going to be uh, a Bob Dylan song called Hurricane, yeah. which is about yes. boxer Reuben Hurricane Carter. Great movie, unbelievable story, a great boxer, great song. So, Bob Dylan Hurricane is my third pick. Nice. Okay. Matt. Trying to find my least liked one here. <laughs> I want to you, find you'll what's get it. gonna get me the most booze. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, Sailing by Christopher Cross. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Because sailing does take us away, doesn't it? Doesn't it, Bob Cajun? You know, Matt, we're trying to win this draft. <laughs> I'm taking the place down with me. <laughs> We're going to have to hear these. Well, okay. It, no, but really, though, when you think about sailing, do you not, like, does that song not make it perfect, Mike? Speedball Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a speedball right. after that reference. Uh, I'm just looking at my list. Was sailing taken? <laughs> <laughs> just ahead of you. You know what? I want Just because I want this song to be in our playlist oh, out God. there. <laughs> I want to play Primus. Jerry was a race car driver. Oh, sure. okay. Let's go. Who's a Primus fan out there? You were at, you were at, Bo yeah, listen, right now, I know you were at Lollapalooza and you saw Primus rock this song out. Okay. Jerry was a race car driver is going to be my pick. Here we go. <laughs> hey, Mike, wrapping it up. Wrapping it up. Uh, okay. I'm going to, this is, uh, I don't know if anybody else will know this one. Other, I know you two guys will. Uh, my last pick is Big Leagues by Tom Cochran and Red Rider. Yeah. Uh, that's a Mike share. That's for my old man. That's one of his favorites. And I can remember we would be driving to hockey practice and stuff, listening to that song and thinking, and me thinking, I'm not going to make the big leagues though, dad. Like you're going to be, it's all about a dad and his kid making the big leagues. Wait. Remember thinking, this isn't going to work the out. The guy like, died. Wait, the kid dies. I know. The kid, yeah. your dad, your dad was intimidating you and you have to go to trauma therapy now because that's horrible, No, Mike. no, he wasn't doing that. I the, just, you know, like, there are similar lyrics in the Super Bowl shuffle. By the time you get to like <laughs> deep into the defensive backs, they, you know, did, there's some weird. But did, weird. hold on, did Mike, did your dad go, hey, Mike, I really want you to listen to these lyrics. Real closely. Certainly and then just kind of like slowly pretend to swerve a little bit no, in that No, I car? just meant the, the chorus part, you know. Okay. Now we'll okay. put in Cats in the Cradle up We've next. got, so just to be clear, uh, Mike, you started off positive. You came back with Hurricane, which is about a guy that was jailed for no reason, and then a kid who dies going to a hockey game. Might I remind you what songs you picked? Sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Jerry was a race car driver. Rocky Mountain Way. Let's ride. And center field. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty happy. Matt got super weird with sailing. <laughs> But do so we want to shuffle. talk about some of the Newman ones we missed, or should we wait and discuss that? With Let's the, let Andy with pick yeah, the ones yeah, okay. we might have missed. Uh, mm -hmm. What's going to happen now is uh, we are actually going to uh, take a break so everyone can go to the bar. You can check out those jams. What's your name? Carolyn, you're going to check out those jams. They're going to be awesome. And uh, we're going to come back, and we have Andy Keen, the director of uh, the Bob Cajun documentary, and he's going to have judgment on who had the best lineup. So we'll take yeah. 10 minutes, come back. Give yourselves a round of applause. It's been an awesome audience. Thank you so much. We'll see you really soon. Thank you. Enjoy all these songs. Yeah. You We're so are a fantastic pleased you came crowd. back. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for going to the bar and then returning. Uh, does everybody get uh, themselves? The, there was a, If you went to the bar and you said, I just want Malibu rum, you got it for free. Did everybody do that? That was the, that was the code name we were trying to secretly pass on to everybody. Promo code this day in sports. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we're back here in the second half, and uh, we have a second half guest, of course. Andy Keene's going to be with us, who uh, directed the uh, the Bob Cajun Tragically Hip uh, movie. You've already got a poster for it. Another poster was given out. We've got a couple more. Andy's got a bunch there in the box. Lots of prizes coming up. Um, 
we want to uh, jump back in and, uh, and, and give away a prize right away. So we have here right now another trivia question from Jeff Samet uh, from Sirius Radio. Here we go. Hey, everybody. I'm Jeff Samet of Sirius XM, Canada Talks, Channel 167, host of Canada Now. And I've got a Toronto Raptors trivia question for you. Which player holds the Toronto Raptors record for the most three-point baskets made in a season? I'll give you three options. A, Kyle Lowry, B, Fred Van Vliet, or C, Morris Peterson. So that's Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Vliet, or Morris Peterson. You got your answer? All right, the answer is Freddie Van Vliet with 242 in 2021-2022. Fred Van Vliet from undrafted in 2016 to an NBA champion. Well, check out Canada Now on Sirius XM, Canada Talks, Channel 167, from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern, Monday to Friday. Enjoy the rest of the night, everybody. Yeah, Woo. Jeff Samet. Hey, what did I miss? <laughs> it's like we're doing a sitcom. You keep Aww. coming in. You're like Kramer. Yay. Yay. Today, if you want to go through the door, that's totally welcome. That's fine, too. Yeah. Get photos, whatever you like. Yeah, that, that, that's there for you. Uh, Colorado Rockies on that door. Amazing. All right. Yep. Uh, no one else uh, is excited. Oh, North, and also Minnesota North Stars. Yep. There we go. Excellent. Uh, well, thanks, everybody who, got, who won some prizes. And, you know, the biggest prize of all is being born. And so we're going to segue right <laughs> Right into a uh, section we call uh, we call Happy Birthday. We've got some birthdays for June nineteenth, don't we? And uh, Mike, who kicks off that uh, birthday? Uh, that's Matt. It goes first. All right, Matt. We got some birthdays for June nineteenth. All right, all right. Let's set this up properly. All right, we got the lights down. We're lighting the candles mm, in the beautiful. kitchen. We're I love trying it. to distract whoever's birthday it is. Yeah. And then we're walking out here to say Happy Birthday. It is nineteen fifty eight, uh, June nineteenth. To legendary Soviet team right winger Sergei Makarov was born in Chelyabinsk, Russia. Yes, ah. Chelyabinsk fans in the house. That's All right, right. happy That's birthday, right. Sergei Mark Makarov. Sergei right. Makarov, absolutely. That's such a and it's it's such a big event here in Bob Cage and when Sergei Sergei Makarov's birthday rolls <laughs> oh, around. Yeah. They, that's why nothing's open tonight. <laughs> They're all getting ready. Sandy, do you have one of these? No, it's me. Mike, Mike's up next. Okay, Mike, uh, do you have a birthday? In 1884, Black Sox pitcher Eddie Seacott was born in Spring Wells, Michigan. Now, Eddie Seacott, I think, is the only one of the eight men out of the Black Sox who actually got any money. Yeah. He actually got $10,000 to throw a game. Like, he actually yeah. got cash. Yes. Most of them didn't even get the money they were promised. Yeah. He actually got paid and threw the game. So, famous you know, cheater. Famous cheater, Eddie Seacott. Yeah. Alleged yeah. cheater. Thank you. Matt does not want to get sued by the Seacott uh, <laughs> yep. estate. The family. Estate. Yeah. estate. They're st hey, they live here in Bob Cajun. Here's, a, here's someone everyone knows. Uh, happy birthday, 1903. Hall of Fame New York Yankees first baseman. Lou Gehrig was born in Manhattan, New York. Lou yeah, Gehrig, absolutely. Lou Gehrig. Yes. One of the greats. The Iron Horse, yeah. as they call them. Happy birthday in 1960 to four-time LP. No, oh, you got to go in order. Oh, Matt. I got to go in order. What, what's the next one in your order? That one oh, right okay, because I got a different order. Okay, so in nope. 19, uh, 1987, happy birthday to Super Bowl winning running back with Pittsburgh, Rashad Mendenhall was born in Skokie, Illinois. There he is. Rashad Mendenhall. Yeah. Did you know he went on to be a writer for Ballers? Oh, like, was you know that show really? Ballers? Yeah, yeah, oh, wow. the, the yeah, HBO show. Yeah, yeah he, he worked as a writer on that. I didn't know yeah, that. with The Rock. Yeah, I didn't right? know that. Hey, Frank, keep it down. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> that was uh, Frank Russo, the producer. Should we give Frank yeah, a Frank little? Yeah, Frank Russo right over there. Yeah, Frank a little. This guy's cranking it out. You know, you, so, usually when we do this, Frank, you have a microphone. You don't have a microphone here today. That's right. Uh, we can only have only four have channels. Four, so yeah, only it, four yeah. channels. Frank, Frank is... Sorry, go Graciously ahead. giving up his microphone. For oh, that's now. true. So, so I was going to ask if you watch Ballers, Frank, but you don't have a microphone, so I'm sorry. We don't yeah. get that answer. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Frank doesn't seem sad about that. Okay. No, it seems uh, okay with happy it. birthday, 1978. 
NBA Most Valuable Player, a, cha a champion, and 14-time All-Star Dirk Nowitzki in Würzburg, West Germany. Yeah, there Würzburg. Is, All right. All-time greats. And somebody sort of thinks he's handsome out there. Good, he's, nice. He's looking kind right. of wide in that. Is that the shirt or just like the, the way that's the, the proportions of how I do a PowerPoint, Matt. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Happy birthday, you too can be. You Dirk, too can be real skinny Dirk if you is, let me do your PowerPoint. <laughs> Dirk is a little spread out there, isn't he? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, Dirk is a little spread out, Mike. Thanks so much. <laughs> Speaking of spread out, in 1988, 2018-2019 NL Cy Young winner Jacob deGrom in DeLand, Florida. Look at that hair. Yeah. Is that better than Syndergaard's hair when it was long? Or well, like he's a better player. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so yes. It's <laughs> okay. This is a surprise party. Everybody get behind the couch and we're going to jump out in 1960 for four-time LPGA tournament winner, Patty Rizzo was born in Hollywood, Florida. Did I get it right, Mike? That's it. Yeah. There, there she, she is. is. Yeah. And it looks like she, it looks like she went to uh, my U. U, U of Miami as well. Yeah. Uh, 1980 Heisman Trophy winning quarterback from Oklahoma, Jason White, born in Tuttle, Oklahoma. Jason White, I believe, the only Heisman Trophy award winner other than Charlie Ward, who played basketball, to not be drafted by the NFL. Wow, that's an excellent like, stat. Wow. Some of them didn't play; like yeah. they didn't end up yeah. making. But teams, not but even drafted. I, he was not even drafted into the NFL. Who would think that they'd win the Heisman Trophy as the nation's best college player and think? Well, I guess I'm not going to the NFL. Yep. That is so like, Not strange. even drafted. Imagine being, also, like, how quaint is it to be born in Tuttle, Oklahoma? Probably not that quaint. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Tuttle just seems so quaint. I mean, no Chelyabinsk. Yeah. No. Frank. Or Würzburg. <laughs> Take a quick look and let us know uh, what Tuttle's famous for. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Look. Okay. Well, we've, we've lit the candles for a birthday, and uh, we had a big surprise party. But uh, the biggest surprise of all in life, of course, is death. Oh. And um, <laughs> so segue to one death I have to report. Uh, sadly, in 2010, seven foot seven former NBA center, two-time NBA blocks leader, Manute Bowl, died in Charlottesville, Virginia. Manute uh. Bowl. Uh is the only death we have to report. I think it's the whole weekend this is the only death we're going to yep. report. Well, we just I, wanted I, to give it to everybody here. Yeah, I'm sure other people died this weekend in history. Possibly. But, we, we just, maybe, maybe, but yeah. this is out of proportion again. Yeah, this but has to be out of is, proportion. This is Spud Webb. <laughs> Spud yeah. Webb and Manute Bull. And at the time of this photo, That's this is the shortest that, yeah. player in the NBA and the tallest player in the NBA side by side. I think he remains the tallest player ever in the NBA too, right? Seven, seven foot seven. Seven, seven foot seven. But look, like that knee... Brace looks like it would be like a corset on, like that's totally yeah. out of proportion. Matt, do you wear a corset still? <laughs> Lady never tells. All right, moving on. Only for an evening I, show. <laughs> uh, excellent. So those are uh, birthdays and, of course, deaths for uh, June 19th. Give, yeah. 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 What are you going to say, Matt? Just, yeah, give him a hand for being born. Or for being, <laughs> born being dead. And for dying. <laughs> and for being dead. <laughs> wow, Matt, you made it dark. No, 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 that wasn't me. That was Mike. I kept it light. Okay. Uh, allegedly. Um, okay, well, hey, this is time for a guest. Our special guest has come out here and tell us the results of this draft. This is uh, Andy Keene. He's a Canadian documentary filmmaker and a commercial director for 20 years. He's directed commercials and content for major international brands and won honors in North America and the Middle East. He is currently partnered with uh, a Chief Gibby Jacob from the Squamish. He's developing a series about reviving traditional indigenous teachings. And I know Andy's been working on this for quite some time, traveling back and forth between uh, the GTA and BC, working uh, with Chief Gibby, uh, working on this uh, this project. And Andy likes watching sports. He loves tennis. I'll tell you that right now. He plays hey. a lot of tennis. And in 2012, he won his second Juno Award for the film he made with a tragically hip called Bob Cajun. Yeah. Yes. Please welcome to this day in sports, Andy Keen is here. Yeah. Andy. And he used the door. Hey, yes, Andy, sir. there he is. Unbelievable. Andy Keene is joining us here today. Uh, Andy, thank you so much for uh, to, for making the trip back to Bob Cajun. Thanks for helping me, guys. And so nice to see you all here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really nice to be back in town today. I was uh, talking with James and uh, about coming back and, you know, uh, driving Pigeon Lake Road past the venue where the hit played and... Thinking of a few of the, the great characters who we met while making the film, and I drove past Lorraine's house, and I wondered if Lorraine was still there. Uh, didn't see any horses out back, but I arrived at this barn, and the first person I saw walking the halls was Lorraine herself. Wow, then she's <laughs> here tonight. It was, it was a magical moment. 
Yes. Amazing. Well, uh, Lorraine, thank you for being here tonight. This is so great that you got to reunite. Uh, Andy, uh, so had you been back to Bob Cajun since the documentary? I, if I have, it hasn't been for six or seven years. But I, I, after spending a bit of time here doing the film, um, there was a few things that brought us back. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful town, and there was a few characters here who we stayed in touch yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you guys have a couple questions you want to ask about to Andy before we kick off? Uh, or, uh, Andy, or what's your favorite Tragically Hip album? Uh, in Violet Light. Oh, wow. Okay. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I, I like that because that's probably not a common... No, I don't I think it is. I wouldn't expect that would be most people's pick. I, I like that record a lot yeah. too, but uh, it's a little after their kind of commercial peak, right? Or, yeah. or sort of the beginning of their... Less popular stuff. It's I like that record a lot. Yeah, yeah, and I, I just remember. I mean, not to not to to drag it out, but uh, when I was invited to meet the band and talk about making the film, um, I I of course went and listened to all the music. I must confess, I wasn't a hardcore hip fan when when it landed. Of course, I was a big fan of Gord's and and uh, of the of the band, but wasn't hardcore on all their records. But I went and listened to them all, and that was a record that I didn't know mm. and. Uh, it stuck with me. Yeah, because it didn't get as much radio yeah. play as the stuff that preceded yeah. it. But yeah, so I like we that used record. we used a few songs from that album. Very cool. Film, yeah, Andy, what's that one thing you remember most about shooting the doc as related to the band, the band experience of Tragic the Hip? Oh, just just I mean the the, the scale of how these guys operate mm -hmm. and being a part of that and being backstage with them and on their bus and it just seeing what a sort of well oiled machine it had become mm -hmm. after this many years yep. but still they were they're all super nervous i mean i think the best f scene in the in the dock is is the moments leading up to them taking the stage and we're in the bus with them and they're all doing their kind of pre-show routines and yeah i don't i don't i don't know that they had had cameras on the bus before then and i just thought that was yeah it was yeah. it was a magical moment Sure. Pretty cool. cool. Amazing. Amazing. Andy, where can people see the film if they haven't seen it? Do you know where they could see it right now if they looked for it? Is it on? It's on it's on an obscure strand of Amazon's called Stingray. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Which is more music stuff. Right, right, right. right. Uh, you can still order the Blu-ray on the hip site. But yeah, right. Other than that. Uh, okay, cool. I remember uh, you and I went into a record shop in Toronto, yeah. and he had just gotten an order of the DVD, and he put them all on the wall, and he was That's kind right. of arranging it. And you, were, and then he said something like, uh, "You said something like, oh, this is great, you got this.'" He goes, "Oh, you heard of it?" And uh, you said, uh, I, "And you didn't say you said nothing." You said, "Oh yeah, it's good." And I said, "No, no, he directed it." And he went, "Ha ha, no, no, he really directed it." And then I just remember he couldn't believe it. Then he yeah. was super excited. And then as we're leaving the store, you took one step back and just tidied up the DVD wall. Yeah, yeah. You just did a little <laughs> organizing of your own movie. <laughs> yeah, blew the dust off. And they were like, this is perfect yeah. now. Now it's perfect. Uh, Andy, you're here, of course, to judge our songs that were about, you gave us this challenge, yeah. the songs that could be directly about sports, have a line about sports. We've chose uh, three rosters, and we'll put them up on the screen to remind everybody uh, what those were. Now, this is, uh, now you're used to my awesome PowerPoint work, and when you see this, it may be a little bit less because it was rushed during the intermission. And so I want to overpromise how awesome okay. this is going to look. It's going to look about? great. It's going to look great. great. While we're working on that technical thing, yeah. I think we have to address... Oh, there it is! Yeah. 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 That's great. This and is called a Word doc. Now, if you've not worked in a Word doc, it's very challenging, okay? Um, it's... Uh, Sandy. Yeah. Newman was very clearly by Harlequin. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't know that they actually covered their own song. <laughs> I just put three they questions. Did. Everyone on that covered their own <laughs> song. That's what made it magical. I was afraid it might have been Street Heart instead, and I got nervous. Okay, that's I fine. I got nervous. That's fine. But I put those there. But I, so, so, Andy, let's do the first team uh, up here on the board. Uh, we have uh, I the Tiger. That's, of course, Survivor. We have Newman and Biden. Now we know it's Harlequin. Uh, we have Super Bowl Shuffle by the Chicago Bears. And uh, we have Sailing by Christopher Cross, one of the number one sports songs of all time. Sorry about the mic there. Uh, Andy, what's your first feelings on Team One there? Uh, it's going to take me back to that idea of two different scales. Uh, because for humans, I just, I, I mean, an entertainment value, I think I, I really like Matt's draft. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got to say, though, uh, having heard of, uh, well, of course, we, we all know Sailing and Eye of the Tiger. Eye of the Tiger didn't strike me as a sports song, to be, to be honest, or off the top. As the leading hitter, uh, I know it's a pump-up song, yep. but uh, that's where I was, I was kind of like, uh, I, I was questioning that one. Uh, Newman and you explained to me, and uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Harlequins. Unfortunately, they didn't make the list here. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, 
but uh, and the song is Innocence. If if you're listening yeah. or or watching us now, if you know the song Innocence, yeah. but it's Numinate. What we're gonna do to help you out there, Matt, is Michael is going to add Innocence by okay. Harlequin to yeah. this the set yeah. list. So when people are filtering out yeah. of here, the first song they're gonna hear is Innocence. By Harlequin, Beautiful. so you're feeling better tonight. Okay, okay, that puts me over the edge. Okay. I'm just gonna hit Mike all the mics. So, so the one thing I would just, yeah. I, I think, would be fun. And while you guys were were picking your drafts, the audience did react. But why don't we just, for Matt's team, why don't we get a response from the room here? What did people think? It, it, as judging by applause. <laughs> yeah, yeah, applause. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's a tough. Game. Yeah, that's, we, we, that's you know, we, we made a mistake. We tough gave room, him a prize room. early, and he checked out and said, "I'm going to boo the rest of the yeah. show." That's right. We should have held the prize until he it's stopped true. in booing. He's that's been fine. badly yeah. behaved. He's yeah. been badly behaved the entire time. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, that's that's team one. Uh, team two. Uh, this is my team. This is Center Field by John Fogarty. Uh, that's your real off. You have Let's Ride by Chuck Claire, which you are going to groove to with your Malibu rum later on. Uh, we have uh, Rocky Mountain Way. That's uh, Joe Walsh. And, of course, you have Jerry was a race car driver by Primus. What do you think of that lineup, uh, Andy? I think it's a decent lineup. I, I, as, your, <laughs> as your closer, Jerry was a race car driver. Primus is probably pretty heavy. Yeah. Uh, and, you, and you just might bring him home with that. Uh, I think John Fogarty is likely the first song that yeah. comes to mind for a lot of people. So we're not going to give you too many marks on uh, originality there. Oh. Uh, but Tough but, grader. Tough uh, grader, yeah. yeah. But... Uh, no, overall, I think it's a, it's a pretty strong lineup. Um, and I loved how you sang a part of the Joe Walsh number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the high voice. Yeah. Yeah. The high voice. So, so I'm going to turn it over to, sure. to my gang. Yeah. And what did you think of Sandy's list? All right. Pretty yeah, good. Yeah. 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 And I'll tell you something. I've been watching the lady that raises chickens and she's waiting <laughs> for apparently team three. I haven't seen any, mo you've had no movement since this started, and I'm going <laughs> to, it's getting intense. Uh, okay. All right, here we go. Team three. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> hockey's, hockey song by Stump. We're laughing, uh, Stump, but it's Stump uncomfortable. And, <laughs> hockey song by Stump, Stump and Tom Connors. Uh, we have Glory Days by Bruce Springsteen. Uh, we have Hurricane by Bob Dylan. And, of course, Big League by Tom Cochran. What do you think there, uh, Andy? Well, this one caught me, it caught my attention right off the top. I mean, Stomp and Tom, yeah. let's face it, let's, that's got to be the country's anthem. Um, so that's a, that's a great leadoff hitter. Uh, Bob Dylan's one of my favorite artists, so, uh, and the song Hurricane was definitely on my list. If it wasn't mentioned, I was going to say, that's, that's a strange omission, lads, but, but well done, Mike. Thanks for bringing it on. Uh, and, of course, um, uh, Tommy Cochran's Big League is is another like anthemic number. Uh, I know it maybe has a dark side to it, but I think Mike had a pretty strong, uh, a pretty strong list. If I were to compare it to the list I made, I now think before you make your list, you should get some voting from the I, crowd. I will. I will. I don't want to influence will. them too heavily I will. here. I will. So before I do that, you're right. Turn it over to the gang. What do they think of Mike's list? Pretty good. Hey, there we go. Yeah. I knew you were yeah. waiting for that. Yeah. I knew you were waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, th I, I mean, I, maybe, the, maybe the the choice is made. I mean, it's a pretty strong one, two, three, four. Yeah. Uh, and um, I got to say, I'm not. I mean, I know it's not all about the hip, but you know, there's a strong connection to Bob Cajun, and I, I wonder where Fifty Mission Cap is on the. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Very good yeah. point. Yeah, there uh, we go. Yeah. When, yeah, when we that should song, talk about yeah. the fact that we none of us yeah. picked a tragically <laughs> hip song, and there are. Or that I can think of. Yeah. Oh, there's, they're riddled with mostly hockey references yeah. and, and, and obscure ones and, and ones that are... I think like, I kind of shied away from it because I thought it would be sycophantic to you as the judge having ooh, directed right. the hip and documentary, yeah. which, which surprises So I kind of stayed away from it uh, because of that, but maybe I shouldn't have. Well, Mike, that's what surprises me is that Matt's all about kissing up to our judges, and he <laughs> didn't pick that song. You resisted, Matt. No, I, the crowd went, went on me early. <laughs> and I, I decided, I decided that we needed a heel. Oh, okay, you're a bad guy. That's why you got sailing in and, there, huh? And yet, I still feel like if I'm if I'm putting if I have to listen to the, four of these songs on repeat driving home, yeah. Yeah. I'm still going with Team One. And, and I got to tell you, I'll, I'll listen to those to those yeah. four in, on repeat. Yeah, well, yeah. Now that, that's, that's a different scale team. again. You're right. Yeah. I'm going to start them, my drive home with that. sailing. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we have these three lineups, and and Andy. So Andy, is there any other songs you felt like we missed? Would yeah. it be? Uh, and 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 also say to the audience, any songs that you think about sports that we missed, we didn't get to. 
Anything that pops out in your head, you're like, where was that song? Paradise, oh, all the baseball. Oh, hey, right. James, First that's base, right. You got base. Phil Ru- Phil Rizzuto. Phil yeah. Rizzuto's voice, right? Doing What's the? Well, yeah. it, can you give us the line, the sports line? It's well, like, uh, hey, it. he's running around third. He's going to first base. He's going oh, to second course, base. Of course, of course, of course. Right, right. The narration. Can you give us more, Sandy? Right. 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 Do you love me? Do you love me? We'll do the whole thing. Yeah, if you yeah. just got, You're right. Um, That's a great choice. That was a great one. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, Am I, are we exhausted, Andy? You look like you're exhausted. From no, that. I was going to say any others from yeah. the room. I, keep up the fight by Gowan. Keep oh, up the fight I don't know by Gowan. How, how did we miss that? I mean... We look. We didn't have clear the track for Eddie Shack. Like somebody's got to think we needed that one. You know, yeah. I know it's 1966. We didn't have uh, Mrs. Robinson. We didn't have Connor, gone, McDa- Joe DiMaggio. Connor McDavid yeah. by uh, Cadence Weapon. No weaker thans. They have a curling song, Tournament of oh, Heart, and wow. Petition, the song about getting Reggie Leach into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. So there were some real surfing USA. Yeah, I had that on my list. Talking baseball. The- we are the champions. We missed uh, Curtis Blow basketball. Yeah. yeah. And Luther Vandross, One Shining Moment. I almost picked that, too. Yeah. That's a classic. Oh, that uh, is a classic. College a basketball. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's an emotional number. Yeah. Well, I, we, and we all, we've talked about this in the show before. Uh, one of the great ESO giveaways was that they gave it a tape. And one side of the tape was, the Leafs are the best. And that song went like this. The Leafs are the best, better than all the rest. North, south, east, and west. The Leafs are the best. Then you turned it over, and Glenn Anderson <laughs> sang on this particular track, which was The Playoffs Are Here. And that song went like this. The playoffs are here, better than the rest of the year. <laughs> wow. You're going to want to scream and cheer. The playoffs are here. The exact same song. They just, Esso gave that away when you filled it up. Wow. <laughs> nice recall. Yeah. Wow. Do you want to hear wow. Glenn Anderson sing, which I'm sure you do. Hall of Famer Glenn Anderson sing. So, Andy, uh, any others from the audience? Make sure everyone's you know, all accounted yeah. for. Yep. I feel like because the Euros are happening yes. right now. Yeah. Yes, go Holland. Maybe one by the England football squad themselves, which is John Bonham Bradshaw. I also know oh. that you guys might not know that. I, I might not. No. Know. John so, Bonham's Bradshaw. So it's good that we hear it, though. Yeah, w- uh, for the mics, did John you? John Bonham's was a footballer probably 30 years ago. The England yeah. Are you saying ah. John Barnes? John Barnes. Yeah. <laughs> I have to All translate right. the British accent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Played for Liverpool. Yeah. Okay, so that's All John right. Barnes so Jovi saying. John, 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 John. No, not. not. <laughs> Andy thought it was John Bonham from Led <laughs> yeah, Zeppelin. That's right, that's right. Yeah, the drummer for Led Zeppelin. Well, Long no, that's dead. Right. I sort of sat up. Yeah. Yeah. We've just yeah. lost a lot of viewers over. <laughs> the viewers to our podcast. The viewers. <laughs> so, okay. Well, thank you, Sarah, for that. We'll investigate that for certain. Uh, okay. Well, Andy, uh, you have to make a judgment here. There's three teams before you. Uh, I think you may already be going one way, but thoughts on this and which which team are you going with? I'm going to go with Mike Shara's list, his draft. One, yeah, two, three, four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well I'm done, not- Mike. Thanks. Thank you. I only win the music ones. I never win yeah. any of the other drafts we do. Thanks, Andy. Yeah. I feel like I feel like Andy Andy I got to say like but we said like the first two songs are like uh here we go and then the last two songs are here we're crying. Well, okay, I but, but if Stomp and Tom Andy. takes the plate first up. I mean that's, yeah. you're, you're watching, right? Yeah. That's a t- that is good. I mean that as far as a And if he song, makes it to base yeah. and then Springsteen makes it to base and then Dylan comes up? Yeah. Wow, I mean, that's it's, a it's, it's good. That's an interesting sporting lineup. Yeah. Stomp and Tom is your leadoff. <laughs> that's right. Springsteen. He's got the wheels. And then you got Bob Dylan. And then you got Tom. that's interesting. That's I would that's love a, to see Dylan at the yeah. plate. That is holding some a heavy bat. hitter songwriters yeah. there. Yeah. Well, I think that's uh, an excellent, excellent choice. I mean, that is like for Canadians especially. As soon as you hear the hockey song, you go crazy. You know. Yeah. And that's it. That's going to be the top. That's that really is what brings you in. I think it is. I think it was the Stomp and Tom sort of, it was It was going to be tough to beat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, Andy, thank you for being on uh, This Day in Sports. Thank, thank you. you for challenging us <laughs> yeah, to right. this, uh, these songs. It was, yeah. it was. Uh, and thank you for engaging the audience. We even uh, got a uh, British football song, which yes. is fantastic. And uh, please come back another time for sure. And and obviously, thank you for coming to Bob Cage. And yeah. how apropos yeah. that we had Andy yeah. Keene, the director yeah. of this movie. Thank you, yeah. Andy. Thank Woo! you, guys. Thanks. That. It was a blast. Yeah, thank I you, love Andy. that you're doing this live. And what a beautiful venue. What a beautiful place. This is an amazing night. Isn't it great?
Uh, so thank you so much. And you know, that brings us to the end of our episode. Our this very first live show. show. First ever live show. Wow. We have to thank each and every one of you we really individually. Do. We're all going to, we're going to follow you home tonight and thank you as we, <laughs> we, we, we thank you so much for, uh, for being here because, uh, this is the first time we've done this show live. And for all of you to, first of all, be here for the intermission, go get a drink and come back. Yeah. Amazing. They all came back for the second half. We were half. so sure you wouldn't. <laughs> we were so scared that we were going to have no one sitting out here. And, uh, but you came back. And we appreciate that. So please, for a last time, give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. And thank you to James and Sarah for taking a chance on a show that's completely yes, different indeed. for Globus Theater. So yes, James indeed. and Sarah, yeah. please. Uh, I'm Sandy Joven Bevins. I'm Matt Kippen. I'm Mike Shera. Over there we have. That's it. Frank that's Russo it. over so. there. And our guest, Andy now you know Keen, why we didn't Dave give him a Pierce. Mic. Thank you so much for being here as the Dave local. Pierce. Andy Keen. And we'll see you really soon on the next This Day in Sports.